to the Rattlers 2014 Dynasty in the Desert. Glad you could join us here. Chris Harris, Dale Hellestray, Kevin Ray. We'll also hear from Lindsey Smith, all of our broadcast team coming to you from the uh, scene that is the championship celebration. And boy, guys, as you look at that footage there, uh, the, the championship celebration that Cleveland seemed destined to have. It really seemed like a, a city, a town of destiny, what with LeBron James, Johnny Football, the way Cleveland had been rolling through the arena football season. But uh, along came the the veteran and metal tested rattlers and put a absolute hammer on them. They did a really nice job and I don't know if anybody really saw that coming as the Rattlers frankly kind of struggled coming down the stretch till they played San Jose in the in the in the National Conference Championship game but boy they put it all together when they needed to and we talked about it during the season Chris the fact that this is a team that the only reason they're playing this year was to win an arena bowl and so it's really difficult to get through 18 games but all of a sudden it's one and done and the uh, energy's amped up. And the expectations for this team coming in having won the last two going for the three it hadn't been done since the Detroit Drive did it 1988, 89 and 90 and you touched on Cleveland this was a charmed season for them they were 17 and 1 during the regular season they won six of those games on the last play of the game it seemed like this was going to be their year but the Rattlers, they always show up at playoff time, and they got it done once again. Yeah, and of course, a season that had so many highlights, a 14-game win streak, and of course, uh, our opportunities each week to talk to Kevin Guy, and you know, it's, it's that whole thing of uh, you want to keep the win streak going, but as he pointed out early on, you know, they only put the record on the ring if you want to, and Dale, you know that from your championship days with the Cowboys, but uh, I thought in a lot of ways what this team went through in that last month really better prepared them for what they would encounter against a, a much better team than Portland's record would suggest. And then, of course, San Jose. I, I went through trying to three-peat, and I understand how it is no fun. The season is no fun because if you don't win another Arena Bowl, then your season was not successful. So it's difficult to get up for all 18 games and then add three on into the playoffs. So once the playoffs got here, the team seemed like it had a lot more fun. And, Chris, you were there in Cleveland, and I know just in thinking, Thinking back to the NBA season and the comparison that a LeBron James and Chris Bosh made saying that this year for them wasn't any fun. And I know that the Rattlers didn't want to experience this, but they went through that kind of business-like attitude. But just talk about the euphoria and in a lot of ways maybe the relief that you felt down there on the field. Absolutely. Because Cleveland, this was a city and a team. They hadn't won a football championship since the Browns did it in 1964. They were hungry for a championship. And they got there, the Rattlers, and there was a little bit of a disrespect factor, I felt, from the Gladiators towards the Rattlers. They were feeling good about themselves, but the Rattlers showed up and they took care of business like they always do. Yeah, re respect is spelled in the form of the win, a third straight Arena Bowl championship. Stay with us. We will continue our coverage here. The Rattlers 2014 Dynasty in the Desert after this. on Rattlers 2014 at Dynasty in the Desert. Kevin Ray, Dale Hellestray, Chris Harris, and uh, mind-boggling numbers when you think about it, guys, throughout the entire season. 14 straight wins, you get to the Arena Bowl, you put 44 on the board in the first half, 72 for the game. Chris, you were there. I know the, the building was absolutely electric as uh, the, the, the league has to be thoroughly pleased and impressed. But share with us, if you can, just overall impressions and other things that you picked up being there. Well, the place was electric. 
until the game got started. Right. I mean, they jumped out to the quick lead seven zip. Next possession, Kerry Reed, a pick six, and they were off and running. And the place was extremely loud when we got there. But after that Kerry Reed touchdown, the place fell silent. The fans almost turned on their own team, and they left that game pretty early as well. But uh, Arizona, they headed to Cleveland for the franchise's ninth Arena Bowl appearance in search of their fifth Foster Cup trophy, and they were ready to roll when they got into town. Arizona arrives in Cleveland three nights before kickoff for Arena Bowl 27. The Rattlers are a team looking for their third straight Arena Bowl championship. Here we go. Thursday morning, the team makes the short walk across the street from their hotel to Quicken Loans Arena for their final practice of the season. The arena is quiet as Arizona goes through their workout but they know the Gladiator Pit will be a hostile environment come Saturday night. Later that evening, the team attends the Arena Football League Awards Banquet. The Rattlers are looking sharp and are well represented. The organization is awarded the Community Service Award, which is accepted by majority owner Ron Schertz. Marquise Floyd is tabbed the league's top defensive back, and quarterback Nick Davila is named the league's most valuable player and Offensive Player of the Year. It's an especially emotional moment for Nick, whose father passed away during the season. I told my father if this was going to be um, his last season for me, uh, for him to see me play, um, I wanted to uh, give him the best football game or season I've ever played, and uh, um, I think I, I did the best I could. And I want to thank. Uh, On Friday afternoon, the players gather for a team photo leading up to media day. I really appreciate everyone attending today. This is Arena Bowl 27 media day. It's the last time the Rattlers and Gladiators will see each other before the game. And Marquise Floyd is ready for that moment. I'm so excited to be in this position, to play with these set of guys, this ownership, this coaching staff, and try to bring home the three-peat to the, to the fans of Arizona. Saturday is game day. Arizona fans gather outside the team hotel to give the Rattlers a proper send-off. Outside the arena, the scene at the AFL's Fan Fest is picking up. Let's go Rattlers! Let's go Rattlers! I've got them by 28, no less than 25. It's going to be a blowout. The Rattlers are confident as well in a game that's been labeled Dynasty versus Destiny. It's great atmosphere here. This is a matchup that everybody wanted to see. But we're going to see if that's the matchup they want by the end of the night. After the Rattlers score in the game's opening possession, the defense makes a statement of their own. never slow down as the onslaught continues. We'll break them, man. We're gonna break them. We're gonna break them. Arizona dominates Cleveland 72-32, the biggest blowout in Arena Bowl history. Love you, huh? You better, huh, buddy? You want to throw, huh? Oh, we're gonna whoop these fucking ass, okay? The AFL has become the Arizona Football League as the Rattlers become the second team in league history to three-peat. Kevin Guy now has become the second head coach to win three straight Arena Bowls. And quarterback Nick Davila is the first quarterback in league history to lead his team to three straight championships. It's unbelievable. All the stuff we've been through, the whole team, off and off the field, all that we went through, you know. God, it's absolutely amazing to be able to get to this spot and to have a chance to win and the win the way we did. Storybook stuff. Feels great. You know, the players deserve all the credit. They got it done on the field. Total domination night. We did what we thought we could do. 
We pressured them in all three phases of the game. Come out victorious. After leaving the arena, the celebration continues down the street at Harry Buffalo, a repeat of last year in Orlando. And I'll tell you what, guys, you give Kevin Guy and that coaching staff, Connie, Kawhi, and Dave, you were two weeks prepare for a game, nobody's going to stop those guys. You watch what this team went through, and I think that's really a testament to maybe the stubbornness and the toughness of the coaching staff that flows through the players. Uh, did they enjoy the time in Cleveland, or was it all business? It was all business, and it was almost like a sense of, you know, there were so much expectations for them. The great starts of the year, going for the three-peat, and it was almost like a sense of relief. They enjoyed it, but it was a sense of relief that they finished the deal. Well, they most certainly finished the deal. They finished off Cleveland in rather quick fashion, as you pointed out. All right, stay with us, because when we come back, you always hear us talk about starting at the top. Kevin Guy says starting at the top. Well, we're going to get to the top, because Ron Schertz and the coach, Kevin Guy, will join us when we continue. Welcome back to the Rattlers 2014 Dynasty in the Desert. And joining us here on the set, the masterminds behind this uh, three-peat for the Arizona Rattlers, Ron Schertz, the owner, and, of course, Coach Kevin Guy. And, uh, gentlemen, let me first off say congratulations. And uh, I know it never gets old, but, Ron, I'll start with you. A third one, especially when you consider what this team went through the last six or seven weeks, does does it make this one a little sweeter than those first two? I, I don't know that it makes it any sweeter. It definitely makes it history, you know, and I think that's probably the better thing for us because, you know, um, I, I think we went in there with confidence like we never have before and, um, you know, get that first one off, you know, the first one off your back and then get that back to back. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what's sweeter, but uh, it's a great time to be here. <laughs> so, Kevin, talking about it from a coach general manager point of view those last few weeks uh, how much of a struggle was it for you understanding that really nothing mattered but the playoffs and winning the championship but balancing that with having to win some games well you know once we locked down home field advantage you know it was really about winning in the playoffs and you know we rested some guys down the back stretch to make sure they're ready to go and and um, you know I, I thought our guys played their best games of the season in the playoffs um, you know I think Portland was a little better than what people thought they were and, and uh, I think they're gonna be a tough team to to go up against next year but you know I thought we came out and played the best game of the season against San Jose and then and then it just carried over into the championship game well and, and I want to go back to that San Jose game because there were so many people who you know had some serious concern because San Jose was playing well considering the last trip there didn't go oh so well but did you feel immediately after that San Jose game was over that we're back, we got the swagger back, and that, that confidence was where you needed it to be heading into the championship game. Well, I thought when San Jose took it to us at their place, that we had them right where we wanted them going into the, to the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So, you know, um, actually when we won the, the, the Portland game, I felt like, you know, I thought we played well. I, you know, we had six or seven penalties that continued drives for those guys. That night we really could have really blew that game open. And, and then uh, we put it all together against San Jose. But I thought we were we were all in there, you know, focused going into that game. And, and uh, it showed on the field. So, Ron, as an owner, uh, there's owners who don't really care about winning. They want to make money. There's other reasons they own a team. Talk to us about your journey here as an owner with Arizona Rallies. <laughs> Well, first of all, if you want to make some money, you need to get a different business. Yeah. So that's yeah, I'm a little bit sharper than that. Right. Uh, it's about winning. Period of the story. I mean, it's about the community, the fans, um, this city, this state. It's about us putting on a product. And, um, you know, Kevin and I talked uh, four years ago, and we sound like a broken record. He said it starts at the top. And I'm saying I would have never bought the team if it wasn't for him. And um, the reality of it, we talked about uh, let's give this thing 10 years. Let's see what we can do. And Kevin, you know, so much emotion goes into a season, but there, there were so many storylines and subplots with this particular team. Of course, Nick having an unbelievable individual season, but of course the loss of his father. Uh, this team losing some veterans who had been a big part of previous championships. It, just talk about the mental makeup of this team, and in particular, those veterans, the Davilas, the Dukes, and Kerry Reed, what these guys meant to this team, especially over that last month. Well, and the coach overcoming some gastric problems. 
Gallbladder. Yeah, gallbladder. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, you know, one of the things that we talk about first day of camp is mental toughness. And, uh, you know, things are going to happen, uh, you know, during the season. Yeah, Your personal lives are going to continue to move on and, and things are going to happen off the field. And I thought our guys did a great job of fighting through all that stuff and uh, finding a way to overcome it. You know, Nick with his father, Tyree's son, was in an incubator for a few weeks after the, the birth was born several months early. And, and uh, Poots had a grandfather die and we had seven babies. And, you know, uh, hey, I'm just, I'm, I'm just glad to hear our guys are, are being active. Yeah. <laughs> no more off season. Yeah, no more off season. But, you know, we need to plan a little better for the babies but um, you know uh, we just we found a way to to overcome that stuff and and um, you know I, I, our core group of guys that we've had here for the last three or four years we got great leadership on this team they've done a great job you know there are some of the critics as we close out here that have said four straight trips by the same team winning it three years in a row bad for the league I, I know you guys would feel differently but what kind of message does this send to the league and Ron I'll pose that to you quickly well I mean bad for the league is not being on ESPN okay with a sold out stadium that's crazy that's not bad for the league and regardless of who won that football game it was a great it was great theater and then you know I talked about you know I would love to have it here I said but the reality is for the league let's go to Cleveland, where it's the hottest sports city in the country. Let's go up there, put on a show. Obviously, we want to win the football game. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of those TVs were turned off in the second quarter, <laughs> except for <laughs> except for the Rattler fans. But uh, I mean, that that's good for the league. I don't care. I don't care who wins. That's good for the league. All right, and of course, uh, we may have seen KG's best 40 time on that return there by Kerry Reed <laughs> as well, all without injuring his hamstring. Guys, congratulations. Unbelievable season. Congratulations. And to nice you. job this year, guys, too. Great Thank you for the support. Thank right. you very much. All right, stay with us. Our coverage will continue here for the 2014 Arizona Rattlers Dynasty in the Desert. Stick with us. We've got some special guests coming up on the other side. Welcome you back to the Rattlers 2014 Dynasty in the Desert. Uh, the championship parade is done, and we've got a couple of the participants in the parade, but more importantly, guys who played huge roles in this uh, 3 p for the Arizona Rattlers, Marquise Floyd, Defensive Back of the Year, and the AFL Offensive Player of the Year and Arena Bowl MVP, Nick Davila. Guys, first off, congratulations. And, uh, you know, it, it's hard to really put into words, even from our perspective, what a season like this means. And, Marquise, I'll start with you first. As a veteran, as a guy who's been through so much, uh, can you describe just the overall emotions for you when that championship trophy was hoisted once again? Oh, man, it was a good feeling. Uh, we worked our butt off. You know, we had a lot of rookies play this on this team. I never played with so many young guys in my career. But um, I think throughout the season, we just found a way to make it work. And we kept working hard, and we just kept trusting in one another and uh, listening to what Coach Guy had to preach and um, just going out every day and working hard. You really listened to everything Coach Guy said? Just, just, <laughs> you just had a filter. A, just a little you stuff a that Coach Guy said. <laughs> and so, so, Nick, I want you to talk a little bit about I, I was on a team that tried to win three in a row. We were not successful. Just talk about the trials, tribulations, the emotions. Um, obviously, you had to go through things, but there are a number of things that happened to you and your teammates throughout the year. Just take us on that little adventure. Well, you know, this season had a lot of ups and downs. And um, for all of us, not just me individually, we had some players, um, you know, that were going through some stuff. And uh, the beautiful thing about football is that it's just like life. Uh, it teaches you so much about adversity, overcoming things, um, being co co confident but not cocky, um, you know, stuff like that. And uh, to be here, to be in that situation and to win the way we did in the Arena Bowl is storybook stuff. And uh, it was awesome. Well, and, and, and you guys know this, all three of you do, you know, being players and former player. But you, you hear the coaches say, you know, true character is revealed in those tough times. And that last month, you know, th those were as tough as it's been around here in a while. So you guys were, were locker room leaders, field leaders. Uh, just share with us, if you can now, some of the emotions and thoughts and the things that were being said at that stretch. Uh, 
Yeah. It was a lot of things being said, not only in the locker room, but just throughout the league. Uh, I think a lot of people counted us out after the uh, big time loss against San Jose before the bye week. And, um, you know, we knew, we knew what we was capable of doing, but we came back after that, after the bye week and lost to uh, Spokane and then lost to Orlando on the road. And I, I remember the morning before the Arena Bowl looking at the Arena fan and saw the percentages of us losing the Arena Bowl and was like really shocked because, you know, we had been there before and we just knew what it takes to win the Arena Bowl. I have one question for you. Now, Nick, I have not heard you say one thing about retiring, so we're fully expecting you back <laughs> next year. But, but the old guy to your left has mentioned retirement. And Coach Guy's come out and said he can be an all-league jack linebacker. <laughs> he can play just about any position. So would you please let us know, are you coming back, Marquise, or not? Uh, as of right now, officially, I am retired. You yeah, are not. not. Tony Gonzalez <laughs> yeah. <like> that. <laughs> That's hey. a money ploy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like – like I was telling Coach Guy, you know, I'm going to go home on the offseason and really think about it. I know um, my son, my son got his first birthday on September 3rd, so that's kind of that's kind of the decision in my choice, you know what I mean? And um, I'm going to go home and watch a lot of football, and I know it's going to bring that, that hunger back to me. So I told him I would give him my decision maybe like in March, late March. He's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and guys, just some final thoughts, but uh, you, you've played these championship games in virtually every setting, you know, neutral field, here at home, in the, uh, in the opposition's arena. How sweet was it to quiet that crowd? A great environment, you know, sold out arena, you know, and going back to that kind of disrespect, I think there was a sense that the gladiators felt like that they had already been crowned champions and you guys took maybe some special joy in, uh, in taking that away from them and their fans. Yeah, you know, anytime you go into an opposing uh, opponent's arena like that, 18,000 plus fans, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing like throwing a touchdown and seeing the the, the fans get real quiet. And uh, you know, Kerry Reed played an outstanding game the whole game on both sides of the ball. And uh, like again, it's this, this storybook stuff, all the stuff we've been through uh, the last four years. We played in a lot of football games these last four years, and. Uh, um, what, a, what an amazing ride we've had so far. We're going to keep it going. Well, and uh, I can speak for all of us here at uh, Cox 7. It's been a thrill to be a part of each and every one of those, and we look forward to, uh, to more down the road. Thanks very much, guys. Congratulations. Yeah. Nick Davila, Marquise Floyd, just two members of this big championship roster for the Arizona Rattlers. Stay with us. We'll be back with some final thoughts right after this. on Rattlers 2014 a Dynasty in the Desert. Got our broadcast team on hand here. Everybody enjoying the championship celebration in downtown Phoenix. Lindsay, you had an opportunity during the course of the season to interact with the fans, both in person at the games, but maybe more importantly on social media. What have they been saying this week following up that uh, big win in Cleveland? Social media has been going crazy. Everyone is talking about the Rattlers and the Arena Bowl win. It's been so fun seeing the Instagram, the Twitter, and the Facebook pictures and videos, in fact. And these fans are absolutely amazing. They even came out to the airport to welcome home the team after the Arena Bowl. The Arizona Rattlers have some of the best and most loyal fans in the AFL and to prove that over 200 folks from across the valley filled the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport to welcome home their three-time consecutive Arena Bowl champions. Oh it was totally awesome after being there last night in the front row and watching them you know put the whooping on and being here to welcome them back. Yeah, what an awesome season we've had. You know, we love our Rattlers. This has been a great, great experience. Nick, this is the third straight time you've made the trip home from the Arena Bowl as a champion. What are your emotions like as you're greeted by all the fans? Unbelievable. Uh, we got the greatest fans in uh, arena football. The Rattler Nation is here and they're proud. As the team made their way down the hall, cheers erupted and everyone knew that the champs had arrived back in town. I think it's very special. We got the best fans in the league. Rattler Nation has always been out here to support us, and uh, we're glad to bring the championship back to Phoenix. 
Well, and as you can see, just a small sample of just how passionate these Rattler fans have been during the course of this team's great championship run. Lindsay, uh, before we get out of here, just some, some final thoughts and some impressions from you this season. It was an absolutely amazing season. I had a blast interacting with all of the fans online and even at the airport. The fans came out in droves and it was so much fun to see how excited they were to see the team return. And Chris, for you, you know, a, a great unique role is the fact that as a sideline reporter, you're right down there in the midst. I mean, you're catching up with guys after big plays, after bad plays. What has that been like? It's been fantastic, and you kind of get an attachment with the players and the coaching staff. And for me and our cameraman, Weston Watson, to be in Cleveland when they were able to win the Arena Bowl for a third straight time and see the emotions, not only the players' faces, but the coaches' faces, the families' faces, and the friends as well. And for all of them to be together, for me, that was the most rewarding experience of this season. And Dale, of course, uh, you know, for you and I, a chance to call these games, and no doubt, like Chris, Chris said, you know, kind of echoing these comments, you you start to form a bond with you know the players and even that bristly head coach. You do, <laughs> and you de develop an affinity for him. And as a guy who tried to win three in a row with the Dallas Cowboys and fallen short, realizing how difficult it is to do and to see this team overcome so much this season and then end it in resounding fashion was just fantastic. But we can't say enough thank yous to you, the fans who have uh, watched each week with our games, and many, many big thank yous to our entire crew. Too many to name right now, but they know who they are. And without them, we're not here even doing this show. Special thanks to the Rattlers because, no doubt, a class organization. That's going to wrap things up. So glad you could join us here for Rattlers 2014, a dynasty in the desert. We'll see you next season for the Rattlers football here on Cox 7 Arizona.